So the problem we're trying to solve uh, is that there's a you know there's a huge skill gap. Everybody everybody knows that. Oh yeah. Uh, but the training that people are currently getting is contrived, derived, seaside, mm -hmm. all the sides, right? Yeah. But, but none of the middle. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's contrived in ways that, you know, it's hard to know exactly when a hacker is going to attack mm -hmm. and then have your class waiting to examine them like in real time. Sure. Sure. And, and you can't just, you know, hire a red team operator to go, uh, you know, sit in every classroom, right. right. Um, and, and go, uh, you know, attack target machines, one that doesn't scale. Right. right. Um, and second, even if it did, it's, it's cost prohibitive, right? Oh, very. Um, so, so how are you bringing more, or how is cyber bringing more realistic training to, to customers? Well, in order to tell you that, I got to start with where Cyberary began. Cyberary began as a uh, uh, training site mm -hmm. uh, where people would primarily produce things like YouTube videos, and they'd do voiceovers, and they'd yep. walk you through things. Mm -hmm. uh, you could watch a lot of stuff happen, right? but that's far from hands-on. I mean, we don't know what our learners are doing, right? Like while they're watching the videos, <laughs> but if they were doing anything hands-on, it wasn't being provided by Cyber. Right. Right. Now, I'm a big believer. And I, I always have been. Uh, I I didn't go to college. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't do a lot of things. Everything I know uh, self-taught. Right. Right. Yep. And it's kind of like the the bo black box of learning. Right. I yep. I need something to go in. I need something to happen. I need output. And I need to be able to compare the two and, you know, figure out what mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I had the opportunity to come to Cyberary, uh, the board uh, and it, uh, the management execs wanted to pivot away from just talking at people. Right, right. And yeah. get people hands-on sooner. Uh, mm -hmm. And it helps cement those neural pathways, right? So exactly. I, I teach you, if I do three hours of lecture, right? And then maybe on the weekend, right? Or watch three hours YouTube videos. And maybe on the weekend, I fire up a virtual machine and, and try to copy some of those steps poorly, right? I'm, I'm not really cementing that that knowledge, right? right. And, and and even if I'm doing it in real time, I mean, is that, uh, you know, who knows whether I'm doing it correctly, right? Right. Um, so. Well, you know what's the weirdest thing? I, I've taught a lot of people uh, how to program, like various programming languages. Mm -hmm. The first thing after uh, people learn syntax, they ask me is, what should I program? Yes, yes. Hey, Ryan. Yes, sir. What did you say right after I taught you Python? You said you should have taught me Perl. Oh, those oh. are fighting words. Oh. Those are can fighting we, words. Can we, cut, can we cut that out? Perl? Perl? Perl sucks. So, so folks, there are very few four-letter words in the industry. But Perl is definitely one of them. Um, Maybe two of them. Whew, two of them. I love it. Um, you ever see that, how to shoot yourself in the foot with any programming language? Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That di There's a great one out there about Perl. It says, you shoot yourself in the foot with Perl. Nobody else can figure out how you did it. Six weeks later, neither can you. Right. right? And <laughs> that's true. Perl. Right? That it is, is. It is. It rings completely true. Right? Now, of course, the one with Python talks about you try to shoot yourself in the foot, but you keep it in the white space between your toes. Right? So... Um, you know, I guess uh, six of one, half a dozen of another. But coming so this back... This is a weird uh, segue back to what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Perl has almost never been the right tool for the right job. And if you want to build hands-on, uh, like, sock operators, mm -hmm. uh, watching YouTube videos is also not really the right tool for the job. I love that transition, man. That That's a gold star right there, right? Thank you. So you're talking about, like, when you try to uh, teach somebody to program, one of the first questions is, what next? I learned yeah. syntax. What do I do next? Right. We run into the same problem, I think, with a lot of cybersecurity training, right? Training, right? Where it's like, go watch a video. Now, how does a student, right, who doesn't have, um, you know, a, a whole uh, host of, of virtual machines, and, and even if they did, how do they configure them into something usable and get background noise, right? Because right. it's one thing to go find an event when you generated an event, you stood up your own instance of Splunk, there's nothing else feeding in, and then I generate the event, and it's the only thing there. I'm like, I found it! And it's like, well, right. no joke, right? It's the only thing in there. But what are you doing that's different? Well, a couple of years ago, just in an anecdote, I taught somebody how uh, to use Security Onion. Yeah. And uh, they were a level one SOC analyst. Yep. Uh, and I had left for the day, and I got an email at two in the morning, you're like, I found an IP address. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I like, no, it was just like it was there. What I did was I searched and an IP address came up. I hope so. It's Security Onion. 
I mean, and I was well, I was trying not to crush. Right now, of course, yes. So what? What did the email? What, I mean, what did the IP address do? Oh, it connected to something called an NTP server. <sighs> yeah, but that's the background noise stuff. That's By the, the way, right? To, to bring that all you know all whole here, that's the background noise that's in every network security monitoring stack, right? Um, and so if you're not generating background noise for training. When somebody gets into the real world, uh, the reality is that they are going to see that background noise, like connecting to an NTP server. And so if you're not providing that in training, the first time they see it, right, that's it's a, going to be anomaly. in the real world, and it's an anomaly, exactly that. We're telling folks to go search for anomalies, and what do you know, without background traffic in training, your background traffic in reality is well, an anomaly. Right. right? So. In order to, to go from the YouTube watching to mm -hmm. the hands-on, what we did was built a, a per learner environments that would stand up a SOC stack. Okay. Uh, it basically uses uh, some open source tools mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the Hive, uh, MISP, mm -hmm. uh, Helk, yep. uh, Cuckoo. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, there's a lot of automation that the learner doesn't see. Right. For instance, uh, we pick one of 20 threat actors mm -hmm. uh, for each instance. Now, the, they, my ab absolute favorite thing about this model is people will go, okay, well, what are the, like, we're going to need to know the answers ahead of time. I, I, I can't tell you the answers ahead of time until, like, uh, the lab runs yes. and instantiates. I, I can tell you how to hunt and find the answers, but I don't know what the answers are. And right. That blows people's minds. Yep. And so to clarify, folks, right, the, the traditional cybersecurity training model up to this point has been to generate a data set, right? That data set remains static for some period of time, whether that's six months, a year, even just a month, whatever. I mean, a month isn't realistic in most of these, six months or a year. Um, and then, you know, basically you're asked questions around that data set. They say an intrusion just happens at April 4th, 2021. And you're like, it's August 10th, 2022, right? None of my queries well, that work. That could be also accurate. Well, okay. I mean, that's a long detection that's time, it. though, right? That's a long but, detection yeah, time. It's not the pretend that there's this, this time dilation right. kind of thing going on. And, and so when you're generating the data in real time, I can't, just like you said, right? I can't point you to what the answer is because the data is getting generated. You can point them, though, to how to find right. it, which is a repeatable solution, right? Rather than them focusing on a specific answer, you're you're, instead of giving them the fish, you're teaching them to fish? I, I have to teach the QA people to fish, which is funny. One of them accused me of surreptitiously trying to make them mm -hmm. sock analysts by having to go through and figure oh. out the answer. I'm like, you know, I didn't think of that before, but I sure wish I had. Yeah, it's kind of one of those like unintentionally brilliant kind of moments, right? So, yeah. so we'll, pick a, we'll pick an actor. We'll pick out the, the MITRE attack uh, IDs that they'll use. Mm -hmm. Then we'll generate. Then we'll uh, synthetically generate a, a new attack mm -hmm. using uh, real data from uh, previous attacks, mm -hmm. and we'll create a new missed record for it. Right. And but the entire uh, everything you need to answer the event isn't in that missed record. Right. Some of it will be in a, a cuckoo report. Some of it will be in help. Yep. Right. And you'll get a ticket in Hive, mm -hmm. and it will kind of tell you this. You have a you have your playbook for mm -hmm. your SOC. And it will tell you basically like, well, before you uh, can determine if a ticket's false positive, you need to do these steps. You know, right. Just like a real sock. Exactly like a real sock, right? Because there's never a situation where all the data that you need is in one platform, right, right to investigate an incident. It's funny um, you say that because when they asked me to come up with this, they were like, so should, like, when we do this Jeopardy board, should we use like blue, like, like real Jeopardy? Yeah. And I'm like, there's no Jeopardy. Right. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, the, the most important things that uh, SOC analysts do is time management, uh, tool management, Hallelujah. and fusion. Hallelujah, right? Because that's another thing we run into in the industry. And, and I'm interested to know, by the way, how you're instrumenting this, right? But the- uh, Heavily. Oh, I, I'm certain, right? Because one of the things we run into in the industry is not just can you do the job, can you accomplish the goal, but can you accomplish the goal under the time constraint, right? Right, so it's funny that you say that. We have, so all of our events get, like we have a JSON file that gets read and in each JSON file is mm -hmm. a different event. I right. want to add a new event, I basically just add a new JSON file. Gotcha. Right, uh, you have one hour to do four tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do more than four tickets in an hour, you have, you can get up to three more tickets. Okay. A, a total of seven tickets. Mm -hmm. But 
to get the passing score, you only need to do successfully complete four in one hour. Gotcha. Then uh, we figured we asked a lot of uh, people uh, who ran socks of various sizes mm-hmm. uh, for kind of metrics. Yeah. Uh, and we came up with, you know, for training mm-hmm. on, on a tool set that you might not know, having seen an SLP, like the playbook yeah. for the first time, yeah. 15 minutes per ticket. Now, at, at triage level, that right. I mean, I, I own an MSSP that aligns well with what I'd expect, right? For triage level analysis, yeah. so yeah, that's perfect. Right. So there's yeah. some, and uh, the seven tickets are, are a variety. Some of them will be straight up false positives. I love that, right? Because that's something else that, that we don't see a lot in the industry, right? Is the, you know, every time it's in training, it's every time you get an alarm, it's bad, right? Well, that's not reality, right? That reality is, not, no. is that triage is pull, mostly. The human factor of filtering yes. out false positives. Yes, and, and you know, experientially, I, I can share with you that depending on the environment, right, um, you can count on somewhere between thirty and fifty percent false positives, right? Easy, easy, right? And that's, I mean, that's a well-tuned environment, right? Um, if you go drop an EDR in, and you're like, go aggressive on low bins and low boss, right? Like you're seventy plus percent false positive, right? So it's, I mean, yeah. Now, so this is a SOC level one analysis mm-hmm. uh, uh, course. We're debating what to do next. What do we do a two and then a three, or we just uh, expand it to a SOC analysis course, mm-hmm. uh, where you just take it and it kind of tells you like what like where you should be in the uh, seniority mm-hmm. and what you can do to improve. Yeah. I love the model that you're using here too, right? Where you're building that stuff, you know, building the artifacts in real time in that environment. It's one of the things that we do at Scythe, right? Is we offer the ability to go and test your controls in a live, not a contrived environment, right? Live environment. Uh, but in that live environment by replaying, well, threat actor TTPs, right? right? Um, you know, across uh, across the emulation plans that we build, right? So kind of the same thing you were talking about. Select that that threat actor that you want to uh, that you want to emulate in your case for for tickets, right? In our case for for control validation, right? But one of my same favorite, model. Yeah, no, yeah, very much. One of my favorite things about this is uh, if we do the level one, two, and three, mm-hmm. that means that the level two analysts are going to be getting the escalations from the level one. Yes. Like we're trying to make this as real, yes, timely and accurate as possible. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I'd expect there, right? That uh, already knowing that you're. You're today injecting false positive. I would expect false positive escalations as well, right? Oh, yeah. Getting yeah. them trained right from the ground up. Man. We have one ticket, and I can't go. You know, I can't go too much into it, but it would be very easy to spend 15 minutes researching this ticket yep. to only then find out it was a very elaborate marketing email. Yes. Yep. Yep. Have been there, done that, got the T-shirt, right? I, yes. I, I feel yes. that if you're going into sock work, yep. that experience alone. Is, is very necessary. Yes. Yeah. We almost kind of want to send them like a <clears throat> like a, a coffee mug mm-hmm. that when they realize that they spent 15 minutes on the marketing message, yep. they can throw it. Just I love like it. in a real sock. I love it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what's on your roadmap? Well, uh, we'd like to do more, better, bigger, faster. Okay. What we what we are not experts on, mm-hmm. uh, and I've, I've been a threat hunter and vulnerability researcher forever, but... Right. As, as you said earlier, having a David Maynard staff doesn't scale. Right. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're looking to partner uh, with an org mm-hmm. that can uh, help us produce uh, real-time uh, attack data that, would, that we'd uh, use to feed the simulations mm-hmm. and uh, like not just not, not just the attacks that people are working on. Right. One of the weird things that, that we do about this is there's other, uh, you're not, you're not you, know, you obviously wouldn't be the only SOC analyst working. Sure, right? sure. Yeah. You're just working the cases assigned to you. Right. Right. That also means that there's attacks that are going on right. that have nothing to do with your case. Right. Yeah. You can find them. Yep. You could spend time working on them, but now that, that's a rabbit hole. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But we'd mm-hmm. like to partner with a company that could uh, help us. Uh, generate more better yeah. uh, artifacts yep. uh, in a more consistent fashion. Sure. 
Well, conveniently, that's that's what we're doing over at Scythe, right? So we just stood. I know. What are the odds? Um, so uh, you know, conveniently, we just stood up the uh, the Cyber Threat Intel program earlier this year. Um, where you know Scythe is an adversary emulation platform, and you can use it obviously for red team automation. Um, but uh, you know my job as the executive director of CTI uh, over at Scythe is to go build more emulation plans that are more realistic, as well as driving the capabilities uh, behind them that are required ultimately to go execute those. Right. So great example of that um, we just turned you talked about more, better, faster uh, for our Threat Thursday series. We just cranked out a. Uh, Quackbot, uh, Mark of the Web Bypass emulation oh, wow. uh, that mounts an ISO. Um, and then from an emulation standpoint, right, we needed to then go and uh, needed to go then um, and double click a link, right? Well, you got to be in the right working directory. Right. It's not simply say execute, right? right? Um, so that required a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of work on our end, a bit of development work. But um, to that end, right, we're rolling into a module. We'll now be able to do a lot more uh, build outs around that stuff. So, um, that's the uh, sock mafia. It is. It is. Microsoft I was just. I was waiting so we could cut that out and post, right? Microsoft um, found out what we're doing. So, They're here to kill. Oh, us that's all. it. They are right. Um, so anyway, but, uh, but yeah. So so our uh, really what we're looking to do there is build more of those emulation plans faster. And and by the way too, this one, uh, you know, we released. And I'm going to skew the date here. It was the uh, it was the end of July, right? So uh, last week of July, the actual Quackbot malware that we uh, that we wrote this off of. Uh, hit, uh, it actually has a July 14th date on it, right? So the, the ISO itself says July 14th something, right? Can um, you get more timely than that? No, no. And and from a, you know, thinking about you and, and your training, um, one of the things that, that makes uh, this emulation plan fairly special, and, and we're going to obviously build more of these, um, this uh, this ISO, we rebuilt the, uh, it's a two-stage loader, right. not with Quackbot. We rebuilt their, their first stage loader um, entirely because it has to actually execute to load the second stage. Uh, but that second stage, uh, which is the the Quackbot DLL that ultimately gets side loaded, um, it's a uh, it's the real Quackbot DLL minus about 15 bytes, right? So we're going into the malware, patching it out so that it it runs runs it sleeps in memory, right? So your EDR that's exactly what we're like. That's yes. the kind of thing we want. We don't want yes decommissioned or demilled no. or as I like to call it, uh, blue team malware, right? Because now you're looking at, right, you're looking at a, a piece of malware, right, that the if you're looking at a DLL list, it's there, right? If you're looking at, did we just copy it into memory? No, nope, didn't do that, right? It's all, all the sections are properly aligned. If you're not familiar with this, folks, this is the technical nitty gritty, right, that a lot of uh, training vendors kind of like skew over, right? And, and so the stuff looks different in training than it will in reality, right? right? We, want, we want real Yara rules. That's it. it. That's it. And the real Yara rules will indeed trigger directly on that. That's good um, because like yeah. in a training environment, if I have to maintain the environment, then also write fake Yara rules. Yes. That's, right. Why would you want to do that, right? This allows you to pull in the real Yara rules that you're seeing directly out of you know, other CTI sharing platforms. So our, our CEO uh, <clears throat> is named Kevin Haynes. He mm -hmm. was the COO of SecureWorks. Okay. Right. So this is uh, something that's very close, near, dear to his heart, mm -hmm. uh, hiring and, and training and fielding yeah. analysts. Yeah. And he is always thinking about how can we get uh, somebody on deck uh, working like uh, efficient faster. Yes. Right. Yeah. And if we have to teach, if we have to teach people a bunch of fake tools. That's it. Yeah. Like, you don't want to do that. You're just extending your time. We were talking offline here. Well, pre-show actually talking a little bit about how the, you talked about like the fake tools, right? And the, you know, it's, when we say fake tools, meaning like writing a Yara rule that doesn't trigger in reality, but does trigger on my my contrived data set, right? And what we're doing here, like me and you, we, we can track with that because we've got decades of experience in, in information security. When I'm trying to teach somebody brand new to the field, right, this is how a particular tool works, I now have two problems. I'm trying to explain to them how the tool foundationally works, and at the same time saying, now abstract it away because... Because we we had to do the following things to make it contrived, right? Well, that's I mean that's well, wait, a lot wait, Jay, to keep you in your me, mind at the same time. You told me to write down colon colon slash question mark dot dot yeah slash yes. Is that not what I'm going to do at work? And that's the verbatim part of it, right? D Dave's making a joke here, right? But it's the you know that that entry level trainee, that entry level analyst who's taking that that SOC one course, right? They very often 
are, are literally going verbatim, right? So if we're teaching them to go search through a contrived data set, um, you know, and they're going to take that contrived search back home with them that isn't going to work in the real environment, right? So yeah, I, I think this is fantastic. Well, we covered this in training. Uh, first of all, after finding an IP address from Hong Kong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, but we're, so, I mean, that's our, that's our future is more uh, bigger, more accurate, yep. more timely labs. That's it. That's it. Well, I can't wait to see what we do together. I can't either. Outstanding. Well, Dave, thanks so much for your time, man. It's Thank been you fantastic. for having me, sir. Definitely. Definitely.